Hey everyone, welcome to part 42 of my Pokemon game CT Singularity. So this is the third video on scene switching. And in this video, we'll look at how to connect multiple portals. So if I go through this portal, I'll come out of here. And if I go through this portal, I'll come out of here. So, so we'll look at how to connect portals when we have multiple portals in the scene. And we'll also fix some issues that we have in scene switching and we'll make it easy to test different scenes independently. So let's look at how to do all that. Special thanks to all my Patreons for making the series possible. By becoming a Patreon, you can support me in the making of the series and get access to some cool rewards like the complete project files of the series which also contains some advanced features that are not covered here. So let's start the video. So right now we have a bug in scene switching. So if we go to the second scene and then come back to the first scene, then you can see that we have this weird bug where there are two players in the scene. So if we pause the game, then you can see that there are two essential objects all right so so the reason for this issue is we already have an essential objects in our hometown and when we switch from scene 2 to the scene the essential object in the second scene will also be transferred to this one so we'll end up having two essential objects in the scene so in order to fix this what we can do is, instead of adding the essential objects directly to a scene, we can spawn them automatically when the scene is loaded. So what I'll do is, I'll turn the essential objects into a prefab. So inside the game folder, let me create another folder called main. And I'll drag and drop the essential objects into this to turn it into a prefab. Alright, so now I'll delete the essential objects from the scene and we have to load this prefab automatically. So for that, I'll create a game object called essential objects loader. Okay, let me reset its position. And in scripts, I'll create a new script called essential object spawner okay so let's open up the script so this script will be responsible for spawning the essential objects so first we need a reference to the essential object prefab so i'll create a serialized field for that all right and in the awake function we want to spawn this prefab if the essential objects doesn't already exist in the scene. All right. We only want to spawn it if the scene doesn't already have an instance of essential objects. So how can we check that? So we can use find game objects of type in order to get all the instance of essential objects. Okay, and I'll store this in a variable called existing objects. And then I'll check if existing objects dot length equal to zero. So this means the essential objects doesn't exist in our scene. So in that case, we'll spawn the prefab using the instantiate function. Okay, so the prefab to spawn is the essential objects prefab, and I'll spawn it at 0, 0, 0 position. And since we don't want any rotation, we can just pass quaternion dot identity. All right, so this should spawn the essential objects for us. So let's go to Unity and attach the script. 
to the essential objects loader and then we need to assign the reference to the essential objects prefab so let me do that okay so now if we test the game and if we go to the second scene and then come back to the first scene you can see that we don't have that issue anymore right we just have a single player and if you pause the game you can see we only have a single instance of essential objects so automatically loading the essential objects solved the problem for us so using this approach will also make testing easy for us so right now we are in scene one so let me just zoom in to show you so we can run scene one and go to scene two but what if you want to test scene two independently so let's switch to scene two and right now if we run the game nothing will happen since we don't have essential objects here so what if we want to test scene two independently so for that all we have to do is we just have to add an essential objects loader in scene two so let's go to the first scene and turn the essential objects loader into a prefab all right and then we can go to the scene two and we can just add the essential objects loader to scene two and now if you test you can see that the player along with all the essential objects are spawned in scene two so all you have to do is add this object to every scene and you will be able to test every scene independently and by the way one thing to notice the essential objects will always be spawned at zero so here you can see it's zero so let's say if that's not the place where you want to spawn the player for testing the scene then what you can do is you can pause the game and manually change the position of the player so let's say if i change this to something like 4.5 and 6.8 then the player's starting position will be here all right and now we can unpause and start testing the scene so this trick will come in handy when you have lots of different scenes to test all right so next let's look at another issue that we have so if i walk towards this portal and if i keep pressing my down arrow key then we'll have a weird bug so let me show you so i'll keep pressing the down arrow key even when the scene is switching and now even when i release the key the player is still moving and it moved towards this weird position that is outside the fence so let me explain what's actually happening here so in our scene 2 here when the player reaches this tile it will be on the portal and the scene will start switching and if i keep pressing the down arrow key when the scene is switching then what will happen is the player's target position will be set to this tile okay so the target position is this tile right now so after switching the scene the player will still walk towards this target position but in the second scene all right so let me show you the bug once again so if i keep pressing down arrow key while switching the scene then the player will automatically move to this position so what is this position so this position was the target position that was calculated from the previous scene right it was calculated when we press the down arrow key when switching the scene so if you look at the code of the character class 
whenever an arrow key is pressed from the player controller we are calling character.move coroutine and inside character.move we are calculating a target position so this is what's happening we are calculating the target position when the scene is being switched so in order to fix this issue what we can do is we can prevent giving control to the player controller when the scene is being switched right when the scene is being switched nothing else should happen and the game should be in a paused state so let's go to the game controller and in here i'll add a new state called paused all right and i'll create a public function in order to switch to that state so i'll call this boss game and this will take a boolean which will specify whether to pause or unpause so here if pause is true then we'll set the state to game state dot paused and otherwise we should unpause the game and go back to the previous state so let's create a variable to store the previous state which was active before pausing the game so i'll call this something like state before pause and while pausing the game i'll set the state before pause to the current state and while unpausing the game or resuming the game i'll set the state back to state before pause all right so we can use this function to pause and resume the game so let's use this function to pause the game when the scene is being switched so inside the switch scene function before switching the scene i'll call game controller dot instance dot pause game okay and i'll pass true since we want to pause the game and once we are done with all the scene switching logic i'll resume the game by calling pause game and passing false all right so this should make sure that the player doesn't have control during scene switching and it should prevent the bug that we had so let's test all right so now if i keep holding the down arrow key while switching the scene you can see that we don't have that bug anymore so that's fixed so next let me show you what will happen when there are multiple portals in the scene so right now there is only one portal per scene so we have one portal over here in the scene and then we have one portal over here in the second scene so let's look at what will happen when we add more portals to the scene so let me add another portal in the scene all right so i'll go to tile palette take the eraser and uh, select solid objects and delete a fence over here in order to place a portal okay so let's duplicate this portal and move it towards this opening okay so since this is a small opening i'll change the x size to one and i'll place it at the center of the tile all right that looks fine so this is the second portal in the scene and it will take us to scene zero which is the hometown scene 
So now let's go to the hometown scene and add a portal over here. So once again, I'll remove the fence and I'll duplicate this portal to create another one. All right, I'll change its size to one and make sure it's placed at the center of the tile. All right, so now we have two portals in each scene. So let's see what happens when we test. So if I go through the first portal, you can see that I'm coming out of this portal in scene two, right? But instead, I should have come out of this portal. So this is because uh, in the portal script, after switching the scene, we are just fetching the first portal in the new scene, right? So instead of this, we need a way to connect different portals together. So what I'll do is, inside the portal script, I'll create a new enum called destination identifier. All right, and I'll give values like A, B, C, D, E, etc. Okay, and inside the portal script, along with scene to load, I'll create another serialized field called destination portal. Okay, so now we can go to Unity and we can select this portal and its destination is A. So let's select the second portal and change its destination to B. All right. And then we can go to root one scene. And here, this portal should have destination portal as A and this portal should have destination as B. All right. So what we're doing is we are using this destination enum in order to connect different portals. So this portal over here is connected to this portal in scene one. And this one is connected to the one above it in scene two. All right. So now after switching the scene, when finding the destination portal, we should also check for another condition. All right. So I'll say and x dot destination portal equal to equal to this dot destination portal. All right. So here we are saying the destination portal should be the one with the same destination identifier. All right. So let's test the game now. So if I go through this portal, I'll come out of here. And so these portals are working correctly. So now if we try using these portals, you can see that they are also working properly. So we have a simple way to connect multiple portals in the scene. All right. So I'll stop the video here. If you think this video is helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. That will really help me out. You can also support the series in Patreon if you can afford it. Alright, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.